So it's all a little bit of a mystery really. Um, when I was clearing out um, down here there's a gully that's supposed to take the water out of the side. I found a big hole in one, smaller hole further back. <clears throat> so I think I've got to look for more more of that sort of stuff and uh, see how many holes there are in in the in the deck. I mean there's a big hole over there just down down that way. That um you know that needs sort of sealing up just to stop it. Because the engine room, you know, I know we have bilge pumps just in case you you know you get water in there. But the engine room shouldn't naturally have water in it. It's not it's not designed as a as a water bucket. You know, it's just designed to be nice and clean and fresh. Um, <clears throat> everybody says, "Oh well, you know, they all have water in." But you you know, if you went to buy a brand new boat and you saw you know it, it had been commissioned and it maybe a bit a month in the water, it had water in the engine room. You go, that's not right, wouldn't you? And, but just because it's old doesn't mean it's, it should have water in there. You know, I don't, I don't find it, I don't find it that acceptable. So I want to, I want to cure it. Um, I don't know if there's anybody watching that knows about these things, uh, and maybe, maybe can advise me what to start to look at. I know the stern gland, uh, I know the stern gland, but that's, that seems to be quite nice. I did get a little tip last week from the the guy, Bill. So if you're watching Bill, thanks very much for that. Um, he said, well, look, once you, you know, before you go on a trip, you know, put the, put the grease into the gland and that's this little thing here is the, the sort of grease thing you turn that down it squashes the grease through but then the tip that Bill said well when you come back after that propeller's been spinning that grease will have been used and I didn't think of that so you need to give it another couple of turns when you come back to stop the water just dripping through and I, you know and I thought well you know because people had said well you know the stern gland will leak water it's it's a it's a hole that the propeller shaft goes through out to drive the propeller from the engine so it's going to leak water but you know it doesn't have to does it you can you can keep it it might drip a little bit but you could you know you could almost put a sponge underneath it to soak that up and then squeeze the sponge out it's just right you know it could be that simple couldn't it um, but people, I don't know, people seem to accept that the engine room's going to be wet. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit idealistic <coughs> on that. So, but there we are. Um, other things that we've, uh, that we've been thinking about, um, in terms of the kitchen area. I've just come back inside. It's a little bit chilly out there, I'll tell you that. Um, quite a nice bright sunny day but um, so we're gonna have we're gonna have the fridge here so it's not going to be gas powered so that gas tap will go so we'll have the fridge from here out to here it's sort of 500 wide and then a small sink no draining board because under normal circumstances, you know, usually what we'll do is we'll wash up and we'll dry. Um, but it's been it's been manic over the last few days with us having to be out of the out of the not having to be but choosing to go out of the boat. Give us a good. Actually, um, that's the thing we managed. We we were sitting up in the van. Um, and <clears throat> we were we were sort of out away from the marina and Wendy said oh so cold because it was yeah it's been freezing cold so I put the heating in the van on for the first time <laughs> and within uh, I think it was 15 minutes 
<laughs> it, that was typical, is it? When he says, "Oh, it's far too hot in here," so because I turned, I turned it up full. Um, you know, so I had to turn it right down, open a couple of windows, just to let a bit of fresh air, and then close them so we could get a nice even temperature. But it works so so well. Really pleased with that. Anyway, back to the kitchen. Um, sink, a, a maybe a smaller sink than we've got now. No draining board. Um, a gas hob. And we have an LPG hob and an LPG hover, uh, oven. An LPG oven. And uh, then over this way, what we're going to do is have. Um, let me just take you around there. So, so where this is, we'll have a breakfast bar coming out to here, and this cabinet will disappear. That will go. I'm going to take that out uh, in the next few days. It's fixed. There's sort of a a bit of a bit of hardboard there, um, or actually, it's a tongue and groove. Uh, just hung a groove put together but it's held on by this little bracket here um, so that will go which will mean eventually this will have to be slimmed down um, because we then you know, or it will have to come back here or shortened because the breakfast bar will start here and come out to there so we'll need a gap here to walk through it'll all make sense when you see it when it's actually done but then we'll have a breakfast bar here or you know a little seat in place here and uh, probably we we bought this table so that we could have some sort of working area place to do puzzles and stuff like that um, that will that will go um, and the two chairs We'll probably go with it, and then, well, I think it'll be it'll just be more comfortable. Um, we rather like the sideboard. It's a it's a slim sideboard design for boats, I think. So there we are. That's um, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> it's uh. Oh, oh, yeah, I, th oh, I think I told you about uh, changing the lights, so that's really done done a good thing. Um, one of the things what we do now is so we've got the we've got the TV on 12 volt and all the lights on 12 volt. My laptop's on 230 volt. Have we got anything else? We currently have a 230 volt toaster which is used for I don't know three minutes every two or three days so you know maybe about 15 minutes a week so we could probably do without it um there's nothing else on 230 volt oh uh camera battery charger currently on 230 volt um power tools battery charger when needed on 230 volt so there's not that much on 230 volt at the moment um but what I can say is on the 12 volt, so the battery, that is normally um, on a daily basis, that normally goes down to maybe 90, 98, 97, maybe 96% uh, as a state of charge. Um, what I can say, I'm just going to look the state of charge now is what is it it's nine o'clock in the morning um on a nice sunny day bearing in mind i've had that 12 volt fridge on for a few minutes well probably 15 minutes and we're currently sat i'll just show you on there 96 percent and you can see there that we are getting uh, 1.86 amps on the solar so nearly 2 amps on the solar and time remaining because you know there's nothing well there's 
a little bit being drawn out by a few bits and pieces. Um, time remaining says infinite. So we could sit here forever with without the battery running out <laughs> forever with with the current power comes. Obviously, it changes. Um, but it's it's nice that you know that battery will go down to twenty percent before it um, stops giving out uh, electricity, and we're you know we don't, we don't really go down below ninety five percent now at all. So I'm really really happy uh, with that, and that and that goes for charging. I mean, Wendy's laptop, uh, Wendy's iPad, and phone are on 12 volt charging now and that that 1.8 um, amps coming in is the net figure uh, for charge uh, if I if I um, let me just go and see what the, uh, the the solar panel what is the solar panel giving I'll show you that yeah 2.1 uh, yeah 2 yeah, 2.1 amps on the solar. So that's the solar panel. Get you in focus there. And we're getting 2.1 amps. You know, 1.5 down. To, yeah, back back to 2.1. So it varies depending on clouds and sun. So uh, so that's really nice, I think. Um. You know, the other thing is Wendy's really getting into a back into a gardening phase, which you can see by all of this stuff. Look at these. She's getting really, really. We bought these this yesterday, a little decorative thing. Um, yeah. So, and some some hanging baskets that I don't think that's going to stay there, but it, we have got another one of those. We've got these little hanging baskets. So she's really getting into that now, which is really nice. Yeah, it makes the makes the house well, it makes the boat a real sort of homely. You know, this this lovely thing here. I've no idea what what the plants are called. Wendy knows all about that. But anyway, so there we are. Um, yeah. I think that's it for the update this week um there's there's a lot going on and uh we're a little bit all over the place it's so um uh, it's exhausting <laughs> with all the stuff going on anyway i'm going to see you again next week i hope you enjoyed that and uh wish me luck on that engine clean up and uh next week next wednesday when the central heating gets commissioned that's going to be exciting hmm